Hey guys, and welcome back to r slash Entitled People. Hope you're all doing awesome today. It's time to read some more Reddit posts, so be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Handicapped Karen tried to get me fired after she hits me with her electric wheelchair. When I was in college, I used to work for Walmart, initially as a courtesy clerk. The town I lived in easily exceeded 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer months. By state law, the store had to give us a five-minute break inside to cool down, after two rounds of collecting carts and provide us with beverages so we can stay hydrated. The beverage they usually gave us was Gatorade. This is relevant to the story. After working a couple of hours, it was time for me to take my first official 15-minute break. I filled the cup with Gatorade and proceeded to make my way to the break room. There was a bit of a blind spot walking past the registers, so I stopped and looked both ways down the aisle to make sure I wouldn't accidentally bump into anyone. The closest person to me was one of our regular shoppers, an older lady, the Karen of this story, who had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease, the same condition Stephen Hawking had. Because of this, she had to use an electric wheelchair and lived at a local assisted living center. Due to her condition, there were two rules she had to follow whenever she shopped at the store in order to prevent accidental collisions with people. One, she must always be accompanied by an employee from the assisted living center. Two, she had to keep the wheelchair's speed to one of the lowest settings. Knowing these rules and seeing how far down the aisle she was, I knew I could get across quick enough before she got anywhere near me. After taking a step or two out into the aisle, I noticed two things. One, she was not being accompanied by an employee from the assisted living center. And two, she was driving her wheelchair much faster than she was supposed to. She was on a collision course with me, so instinctively I tried to jump back out of the way to avoid getting hit, but it was too late. She hits me while I was in the air. I fell to the ground and spilled my Gatorade all over the wheelchair. The lady loses control of the chair and starts spinning around in circles. She's flailed her arms and screamed with what limited mobility she had. She nearly hit me a second time, but I managed to roll out of the way. I knew I had to try and stop her before she hit someone else, so I grabbed a handlebar on the back of the wheelchair, hoping I could at least slow her down. This didn't work. Instead, she dragged me around in circles in the middle of the aisle. Several co-workers and shoppers quickly rushed in and stopped the lady, who seemed to be okay, just startled. But when I tried to stand up, two male shoppers held me down. One of them leaned over me and said, You're going to be alright, sir. Everything is going to be just fine. He turned his head and yelled, I need a first aid kit. I could hear a lady in the background scream, Oh my god, somebody call 911. I just laid there and wondered what the hell happened to me. Sure, I was going to have a nice bruise on my hip from when I hit the floor, but besides that I felt fine. I quickly discovered why the customers were panicking. The flavor of the Gatorade we had that day was fruit punch. Some of it splashed on my face when the lady hit me. The customers who witnessed the incident thought I busted my head open when I hit the ground. I had to assure them that it was not blood, it was just Gatorade. A member of management eventually showed up to document the incident. After I gave him my statement, I was finally able to take my break. I was even given an extra 5-10 to 10 minutes so I could clean up and recuperate from what had just happened. This was where I thought the story would end. I was wrong. A couple of weeks later, I was called back to the manager's office. The store manager, who we'll call Kate, and several assistant managers were in there waiting for me. Kate told me to take a seat and asked if I remembered the incident from a few weeks ago with the handicapped lady in the electric wheelchair and the Gatorade. I just chuckled and said, how can I forget? And Kate says, that lady was just in my office and she had a lawyer. She wanted to sue the store, claiming that she suffered mental distress from that incident. And as part of her lawsuit, she wanted your employment with the company terminated, claiming that you were the one responsible for the collision. I was speechless. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But Kate quickly put my mind at ease by saying, Don't worry, you're not in any trouble. We showed the lady and her lawyer the security footage from the incident. I reminded her of the rules she knew she had to follow whenever she shopped at the store to prevent collisions from happening. But she decided to break them anyways, and that she should consider herself lucky that she hit a store employee who only suffered a minor injury. Because if she had hit another customer, and that customer suffered a serious injury, she would be held responsible for the collision, and would have a major lawsuit on her hands. The assisted living center would also be at fault, for somehow allowing her to leave the center on her own, without their notice. But if she still wanted to sue, she can try, but she will not win. 
Karen's lawyer knew they didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning this one, so the two of them left. Kate said that since I was the employee involved in this incident, she thought I would want to know what the handicapped Karen attempted to do, and that I would get a kick out of it. Nasty breakup, false CPS call, and a cross-country move. I, 27, and my husband, 35, have been married for almost a year, and we've been together for nearly six years. During the first four years of our relationship, he and I were in a poly triad with another woman who I'll call Sarah, 34. A poly triad is three people who were all dating each other, in case anyone wasn't sure. They were together first, and had been for about 10 years before I came into the picture. I have a child from a previous relationship, who I have sole custody of. And in December 2021, I found out I was pregnant with my second child. This pregnancy took me completely by surprise, as I was on the pill. When I told my husband, it took him a while to come to terms with it. But eventually, he accepted it and chose to stand by my side and be active in the baby's life. When I told Sarah, however, things took a bad turn. At first, she demanded I have an abortion. She stated it wasn't fair for me to keep my baby when she chose to abort one she'd been pregnant with about a year after I came into the relationship. Then she started demanding that he get her pregnant as well. Within three months, Sarah's mental health started to decline further and further. She had always struggled with depression and being bipolar, and I had called 911 for her several times during our relationship for Sarah trying to unalive herself. It got to the point where her declining mental health was starting to negatively impact me, so I told her that I wanted to take a break from being in a relationship with her. I told her that I didn't know when I'd be ready to be with her again, but that I needed time. The best thing she could have given me was time. After just one week, Sarah cornered me while I was taking a bath and kept asking why we couldn't get back together, why I felt I needed a break, why I had to keep the baby. Then it turned into her berating me and saying that I was horrible to everyone in my life. That night, Sarah and my husband had a huge fight, and we both broke it off with her. After two weeks, I got a call from a CPS caseworker. A report has been made against me, accusing me of neglecting my son. We scheduled a day for a home visit, and I immediately took my son to his doctor to get documentation on his physical well-being. Both his pediatrician and his therapist, he has ODD, ADHD, and autism were more than willing to speak to the caseworker on my behalf. The day before the home visit, Sarah had the electric turned off. I'd heard from a mutual friend that she wanted the caseworker to show up to a powerless home in the middle of winter, but I was able to have it turned back on that same day. The caseworker came and went, and the allegations against me were proven false. Not long after this, my husband and I kept being tormented by Sarah and her family. Slurs and curse words were written in chalk on our walkway, Outdoor decorations were torn down. Intimate photos were sent to people in my town who I didn't know, and lies were spread about me and my husband. The police did nothing to help, and I felt like I was living in hell. Even my son was afraid of her because as hard as I tried to hide everything from him, there were some things he did see and notice. In April of 2022, my husband and I decided moving was the best thing we could do. We were offered a place in Texas with his family, because Texas was on the other side of the country, we decided to get married so that my family could be at my wedding. April 30th, we tied the knot, and May 15th, we started the three-day long drive from New York to Texas. It's been nearly a year since we left, and I haven't heard from Sarah since. I've been told that she tried to cause issues for us here in Texas, and she also has family here. But thankfully, we've had nothing but peace since we came here. My daughter is now seven months old, and we honestly couldn't be happier. We are in a much better place mentally, financially, and emotionally. The way I see this is it's kind of a blessing in disguise that things came to a head earlier than later. She's obviously unstable and definitely not someone you want to have in your life, especially around your kid. Neighbors staring into my house. What to do? This has been going on a while and it's getting to the point it's severely angering me and upsetting my wife. I live in a semi-detached house. My neighbors next door moved in in 2020. A guy, 40-ish, a woman, 37 to 40, and a young girl, 8 or 9. One morning last summer, I opened my curtains in the back downstairs room to see my neighbor, the guy, staring over a 6-foot fence directly into the room. Frightened the shit out of me, to be honest. When I noticed him, he didn't move, just kept staring. I walked away and left it. A few days later, I opened the curtain to see the woman staring over into my back room. 
she 100% was stood on something to be able to look over, as she's only 5 foot 2 or 3. I stared at her before walking away. A few days went by and my wife came and shouted at me. The guy was staring over the fence into our house, watching her doing the ironing. She told me she didn't look directly at him, but had noticed him there for a good 10-15 to 15 minutes. I went outside and told him to f*** off. He just bent down and acted like he was picking something up and I went inside. A few days later I went out into the garden to put something in the shed and hear the fence panel moving. I look over to see the little girl clung to the fence, staring me out. She had to have been stood on a chair or table or something. I put some boxes in the shed and went back inside. She was still there as I entered the house. This went on the whole summer. We'd be having dinner at the table, and they'd be watching, ironing, watching, doing things in the garden, watching. So I went out with my wife and bought some trees and tubs and placed them next to our fence, blocking their view. Peace at last. Then we noticed, they're staring in the front window. No word of a lie, they are like NPCs. We thought it was a fluke, but we noticed it multiple times. When we're cleaning the windowsill, cleaning windows, doing gardening, etc. As they arrive to their house, they have to drive past ours. As they get to our driveway, their heads turn like creepy dolls, and they look at our house into our living room as they drive up and into their drive. The guy comes out to mow the lawn, and he'll stare the whole time looking into our living room. The woman will sit in her car, parked on the street, and stare into our house. We put blinds up just before Christmas, and every time they're open we notice them looking in every chance possible. We also bought a ring camera lately. We have the motion area set to cover to the end of our drive. Sometimes it'll pick up when people walk past. Every time the guy walks past, he stares the whole time into our camera. We don't even bother checking motion notifications now, and just do answer. When the guy was out working on his car, I went out and asked why he was so fixated on what's inside our house. His reply was he had no idea what I was talking about. When I said we had to put planters up in the back because of him staring, his reply was f*** off you freak, before going inside. I know I'm not crazy, it's making my wife really uneasy too. When we see him staring in we close the blinds fully. I'm sure he gets a kick out of it. It's really weird all three of them do it. Honestly it's driving me mad. It's my wife's house and she's lived here since being a kid, so we don't want to move. I've got a specialist coming to price up doing a frosted film on our windows. If I did it, it'd be full of bubbles. Also, I can't believe we never thought of this. Thank you guys for all the suggestions. This is seriously something like out of a horror movie. This is beyond creepy. If it was just one person in the family, then sure, it would still be creepy. But the fact that all three of them do it, even the nine-year-old, is just so weird. Alright guys, that is it for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So I hope you all have an awesome day, take care out there, and until next time.